Um, I guess I'll start I'm a late bloomer. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was it about? I mean, we all love a pilot. What was it about this role that the, the script that attracted you? The role? Um, I love thrillers. I love dramatic stories, and um, the pilot felt really cinematic, and I could see sort of where it could go week to week, the potential, you know, to have that giant arc that was like, wow, this is, there's just a lot, like a depth, a real, a real depth of character and, and possibilities and plot going on there, so I just, first of all, I thought that was fascinating. Um, I've always been a fan of Kevin Williamson's work and Kevin Bacon and James, and they're all attached sort of as I was kind of coming into it. So I knew the pedigree of the project and, and what the potential was. Um, and so that was exciting. And then for the character of Mike Weston, um, I don't know, I thought, you know, there's this aspect of hero worship that he has that I sort of thought was kind of funny and to develop, like, I think at the end of the day, there's hero worship where you just goo goo gaga and like, oh, get your coffee, sir, and all that kind of stuff. And then there's the side of it where you really want the person you look up to to respect you and I thought that there's like a funny balance that he could play you know there's kind of the sort of goofball like you know I know everything about you like you're you know my hero and then there's the idea that he Mike Weston is actually very intelligent and very capable and the reason that he's on the case is because he has studied this he's, his thesis at Quantico is about Joe Carroll he knows everything about Ryan Hardy he knows everything about the case and I thought that the balance between those two things would be kind of fun to play. There's sort of like a, a lighter tone to it, and also like this guy's very capable and will you know, be a great agent. So I like that. So we'll see your character grow in the, the show? Will he I hope so. <laughs> I mean, you know, obviously we haven't started shooting it, but yeah, I mean, I, I think to me that's the direction it will be headed. And again, that's probably a better question for Kevin Williamson because he knows where it's going. But um, but yeah, I th I, to me, I think that's the direction that, that Mike can go is, is to become a bigger part of the team. And, and like I said, he's very capable. He's in over his head. He probably wouldn't be on this case if he hadn't done this thesis. I think the only reason is he's like, Joe Carroll's this week. Who knows, like, who, who knows about this guy? And it's like, oh, well, there's this young agent that that's what he, that's his life for the last couple of years was like studying this guy. And so um, I think if that wasn't the case, he wouldn't be a part of this specific case. So it's kind of like winning the lottery for him. You know, it's like he's, he's this case that, you know, Ryan Hardy is retired. The guy who looks up to Joe Carroll, the person he studied is in jail. I mean, it's kind of like, all right, I missed that train. And then all of a sudden he gets to jump on board. And it's like his idols in a weird way, he gets to work with. And so I think that uh, throughout the show, Mike will, will grow quite a bit. How about that optimism? Is that hard to hold on to? When week to week it's going to be faced with eyeless people and ice cream. <laughs> yeah. And, you know. Yeah, well, I, yes, I mean, I'm sure that is, as is very evident with uh, with Kevin Bacon's character, I mean, it wears on you. You know what I mean? And everyone that I, I, I went to the federal building and spoke to some FBI agents, and you can tell that it's like, yeah, that's grinding, that wears you down. Um, but I also think that you have to be a certain personality to get into it and to be fascinated in it in the first place. And I think that's probably where that resiliency will come from, Mike, is that he's just been interested in in this subject, which is the violence and probably bringing someone to justice. I mean, there's got to be that sense. And so I think there will probably be a really resiliency, and I'm sure that there'll be episodes where it really wears on them, and then other episodes where it might not so much. But uh, yeah, that's an interesting point, is that it's, it will wear you down, and I'm sure it does. Um, but I think he's got, he's young. Maybe 10 years, he'll be, he'll be burnt out. Yeah, but I think he's young now, so. Kevin's known for writing really like funny dialogue for like you know young characters, and, uh, but this is a pretty grim pilot. Like, yeah. are you like holding? I hope you get to smile at some point. Or um, <laughs> no, it's just a, yeah. I mean, it depends where it goes. I mean, whatever whatever the circumstance is. I mean, I, I, I'm sure that there will be there will be those moments to sort of. And I think Mike does have the potential to have some sort of light moments, you know, so I'm, I'm hoping that those will bounce, bounce up. But again, it is what it is. Like, whatever happens, happens. I'm along for the ride, whatever it is. And I, to be honest, I love dark stuff. You know what I mean? Like, that's that's what I like. That's what I watch. And so if uh, if that's what it is, so be it. I'm cool with that. <laughs> we, uh, we don't learn a lot about him sort of outside of work in mm -hmm. the pilot. Um, we can figure that somebody who's this obsessed with serial killers probably is a little messed up. <laughs> but um, what do you know? Is there? Have you either talked to Kevin and Marcos, or have you sort of created a, a life outside of work for Mike, or do you not feel like he has one? Um, I, th I think he's probably very dedicated. I think he's probably very busy. Um, as far as like a personal life, like dating, it's like I haven't really thought about that. Probably not, to be honest. I mean, he's very 
very focused, very busy. It's an intense process. But as far as like where he came from and why he's doing the job, it's like you know I, I figured that you know he probably studied law, became interested in that, maybe started reading certain cases. Um, and again, it's like these are not established character traits or anything like that. But I, you know, I imagine somewhere in his family, there's probably law enforcement. Um, with the FBI guys that we talked to said that you know a lot of them come from law enforcement families, a lot of them studied law and sort of became interested in, in the field because of that. So I assume that he's a pretty serious guy. Again, I, I think Mike is is very intelligent. You know, that's the thing that I, that I keep coming back to. And so I think he's very dedicated, he's, he's smart, he's very focused. And um, as far as being a part of the FBI, I think that's probably where he came from. And again, as far as the personal life and stuff, I'll leave that to, to Kevin. It's, you can probably create a much more interesting social life or backstory <laughs> than, I, than I can, and I look forward to that. <laughs> So you said you talked to uh, FBI agents yeah. before you did before you did this role. Yeah. Was there anything else you looked into, like anything about serial killers or anything like oh, that? Oh yeah, I, I just went to YouTube and typed in serial killers, <laughs> and I watched days and days and days of trials and documentaries. And I mean, it's it's the thing that I that I the reason I did that, and I didn't just go watch the Science of the Lambs or something like that, is because which I love by the way, but. Um, is that you can sort of, you know, when you're making a, a film or television project about violence, you can sort of distance yourself. And so to put yourself, you know, watching families completely break down and, and you know, go berserk. I think, it's, I think it was a Jeffrey Dahmer trial that a woman just goes absolutely crazy, you know, her son or something like that was killed. And it's like, so that's the reaction. That, and I think that's what the show has and what's interesting is that it's it makes it real. It's not like, oh, there's a serial killer. It's like, it's scary, you know? It's the potential to have that is very scary. So I watched a lot of, um, a lot of YouTube videos, documentaries, just about serial killers and uh, it's it's just really disturbing. It's really dark and really scary and uh, it's really creepy. Well, why so, do people have that fascination? That's I don't know, but that's, I mean, that's so the question. Much going on right now on TV. And yeah, like, um, I think that I don't. I don't know. I don't have that answer. I mean, again, it's probably a very big question. For, again, why Mike Weston decides to follow that? I think there's something fascinating. I think it's scary. I think you want to understand it. I think you want to know why someone can do something like that. And I don't think there's an answer. That's the thing that's so crazy is that when you watch these trials, it doesn't wrap up. There's no answer. They're either crazy or they or there's never an explanation. They're just you know obviously some people they're like you you see the the sort of loopy side of it, where they're just off and they're just scattered. But then there's people that, they're, and most of these guys are very intelligent, very educated, very socialized, and it's like, why? And, how, and, and more importantly, I think it's fear, because it's like, how do we figure out who these people are to protect ourselves, to protect our families, and there's just no way. That's what's infuriating and frustrating, watching these real life things, because you watch the trials and you, you watch the interviews with them, and there's no, there's no rhyme or reason sometimes. It's just the way that they are, and you know, that is pure true evil as far as I'm concerned, and, and it's innate in certain people, and that's what's really scary. It's like, some people are made and some people are born. I, I fully believe it, and, uh, and uh, it's interesting too to see the process of, you know, the stages, like animal mutilation as a kid, or, you know, abuse, and like sort of how that springs and turns turns people into serial killers sometimes. But some of the, some of the people just don't have that trajectory. They just sort of like, I don't know, they need to do it. It's, they're driven. And uh, that's what's really scary. And so I think that's why people are interested, because you want to know why. You want to know how to protect yourself. You want to know how to spot them. But I don't think you can. You know, that's what's terrifying. So. <laughs> I ran over a squirrel last week. I, was like, I said, am I a serial killer? No, did you pick it up and, and like, dissect it? Because in that case, maybe. I came back later. Okay, so yeah, so we should be worried about you. Let's take a picture. Um, um, sorry, one of, the, one of the things that sort of Made, makes you so nervous in the pilot is that it can be anyone. Yes. <laughs> you, are you are you worried that you know half a season in we're gonna find out that like Mike is secretly? I mean, there's always that possibility, up. but I think that's what. <laughs> oh, is teamed up? No, like on you know on Carol's side. Oh yeah, I mean, I, who knows? I mean, that that's I think that's what's great about the show. You, I don't think you have any idea what's gonna happen to anybody. I mean, it's very you're just on the edge of your seat. Who's gonna die? Who's on whose team? I don't know. And I certainly don't know at this point. So, um, again, that's the exciting excitement of the writing. And, uh, you know, I think that's what will keep audiences tuned in, too. It's like, you just never know what's going to happen. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much.